Do you want to give a few more minutes for people to join, or shall we um, kick off? Actually, we have quite a bit. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you again, uh, Tony uh, and Professor Christa and Angela and Matt. Uh, uh, thank you for being available to present this morning. And um, uh, we have about 30 minutes, and uh, I guess the floor is yours. Uh, that, that's great. So um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Tony Morgan. I'm an innovation leader and executive architect at IBM. But uh, over the last uh, number of years, I've also been working with Costo and Matt and the team at the University of Leeds in the UK. And one of the things we've done now um, is uh, collaboratively with IBM Input, created a new online professional development course focused on innovation management, which we thought would be uh, very interesting for this community. So, uh, Haluk, if you want to go to the, the next slide, please. Uh, this is just a little bit of background on the University of Leeds, um, which the other guys will be better uh, positioned to talk through. But you, as you can see, um, the, the, the university is actually very successful. It's been named as 2017 University of the Year in the UK by the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide. Uh, the University Business School, uh, the, the key people were Kirsto and Matt Fit, who are looking at driving a whole series of innovation management activities. And I've, incur I've included some of uh, Kirsto's uh, backup slides in the backup with a lot more detail about some of the things that um, Kirsto and the Business School team are doing focused really around innovation management. And Kirsto, I don't know if you want to say a few words here about uh, some of the well, things we've been yeah, yeah, maybe just kind of explanation what the Russell Group uh, means. So that's the group of top 20 research-led universities in UK. So I think that uh, UK has probably around 100 and something universities. And a Russell Group is a kind of, well, uh, a name for the top 20 research-focused universities. And in particular, I think it would be interesting if you just said a couple of words about um, the focus of CTIE and uh, your focus on innovation management. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I know that Tony has some slides I can do maybe with, without it. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the business school has kind of different areas, and and one of these, well, a growing area is innovation management and I think that we have a dedicated center for technology innovation and engagement and engagement has a particular meaning so we as a center we work pretty closely uh, with uh, companies and also our colleagues uh, from different departments across the university so we are engaged in some interdisciplinary research uh, as well as uh, work we work very closely with companies and I think that uh, this MOOC which Tony will talk about in the future and hopefully Angela uh, is one of these results when uh, we started to work with IBM and looked at the opportunity and I think that uh, what came out was to develop uh, a dedicated online training for for innovation management but it, it is based on the on the research expertise that we have here at Leeds and I think I'd add to that that um, as well as there's you know there's MBA expertise there's master's courses there's um, now a new undergraduate module we're, we're developing so a lot of focus on innovation and innovation management at Leeds which is great so could you pass us on to the next slide please That's great. So we'll just talk for a few minutes about the, um, the the class that we've done, and I'll get Angela to talk in a minute as well. And then we'll open it up really for for, for questions because I think this is one of the interesting things about this community is the discussion. So as we've said, in in collaboration, the University of Leeds working with um, myself and IBM. Although I've now, if you like, got a foot in both camps because I'm a visiting professor sponsored by the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK at the University of Leeds, working with Kirsten and the team. So together we've developed a new free online professional development course focused very much on the topic of innovation management. It's going to be hosted on a platform called FutureLearn, and that platform offers really a huge set of courses from leading universities and cultural institutions around the world, and I'm sure many of you uh, have um, seen it. When you get the slides, you can uh, follow the link if you haven't or, or, or search it. Um, 
But the learning objectives of our new course really focus on getting the attendees to improve the way they do innovation in their own organization. So it can be for people who are interested, you know, researchers and academics, but very much we also want that sort of industrial, uh, cross-industry point of view, people that are interested in how they can make innovation work more effectively in their own organizations. So if we just move on to the next slide, please. And when we were looking at this MOOC, or Massive Online uh, course, um, it was actually a follow-up. So the, the University of Leeds working with Future of Learn, and Costa was involved in this, have already done one, one course, and we actually wanted a more in-depth one. And we spent quite a bit of time thinking, what are the key topics we should focus on? And this is the list we came up with. So first of all, why is innovation difficult? Um, you know, because uh, if it was easy, then everybody would be doing it much more effectively. So what are the challenges, really, at an organizational level and so on? Then we looked at innovation in the core business, which is one of the things that I've focused on. I've worked a lot, and uh, plugging my book here, <laughs> I've written a book for ICIP as part of the, the, the publication series about collaborative innovation between um, uh, service providers and their clients. So, you know, we, but we talked about innovation in the core business, about... What, how can you improve that innovation? Then we look much more, wider afield. So, you know, I think most people on the call will have, uh, at some stage, looked into disruptive innovation. We want to do that in depth. You know, what's IBM doing in this area? How does IBM position itself? But also some much wider industry case studies. So, I think it's a very fascinating topic. Then we we, we focused on open and collaborative innovation, and you know, another hugely important one to me, which is design thinking. So trying to look at how you're developing the new ideas and innovation and prototypes and technologies, but with the end user totally at the center of that. I think we've all used websites and apps and things that have been very badly designed, but they've all been designed, but they haven't been designed with that end user piece. So, so we thought design thinking was really important to bring into this. Then we also wanted to cover the you know, absolutely critical topic for a, for a company like IBM and many other companies, the intellectual property management. So links very closely to the open innovation piece, I think, as well, in terms of um, uh, innovation inside out and outside in. And then lastly, I'm not sure why I can see Scott on screen, but hello, <laughs> hello Scott, not sure if everybody can see. Um, uh, lastly, we've also developed a, an innovation capability assessment framework. At the moment, this is relatively um, straightforward and simple but it's meant to be a means that we can get organizations um, to look at the maturity and how they do innovation today and, and where they can look to improve. And we've positioned that around a, key, a series of key innovation enablers. And that's something, Crystal, I think jointly we'll work much more on in future, making that more detailed and more useful and leading to action plans. And, and But the, 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 the sort of approach on the, it's an online course. The learning approaches include things like written articles. There's quite a lot of video interviews with people like myself in IBM, but also um, Rashid Palmer, MBE, who was the um, IBM Academy of Technology president. Uh, people from IBM talking about design thinking. There's a lot of case studies, so IBM case studies, but also wider industry ones. An opportunity for the learners to do some self-reflection, ask questions, and also do additional reading. So there's a whole series of different learning approaches that, that are used in the course, which I think I think it's it's an innovation in itself. This course, if you like. So if we just move on to the uh, to the next slide, please. So. Um, Angela, this is maybe, um, if you're on the call, you want to say a few words about just how people on the call can get involved if they're interested. So I'm not sure if uh, Angela's on mute or, 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 or not. So uh, chip in at any time, but if you, if you can't, uh, if we muted you by accident, apologies, I'll, I'll talk it through, but if you, if you come on, I'll hand over to you. So at the moment, you can see there's a registration um, page link at the bottom, and um, the actual course itself starts in March, the 20th of March. It runs over a two-week period, it is, but it's flexible study, so you can actually do it beyond the two weeks, but we've, it's structured to do it over, a, over two weeks where you need you know, a couple of hours a day. There's a QA and a halfway through the course where people can get involved and uh, engage directly with the educators, so Kirsto, Matt, myself, uh, and other people. It is absolutely free, so anybody can sign up, register for it, and do the course. And the audience, I think, building upon what we've already said, is we're focused on anyone with an active interest or role in innovation management, and that could be employees and managers at um, 
all sorts of organizations from startups to you know, large corporations such as IBM and anywhere in between. Um, academics and researchers with interest in innovation and innovation management. And, uh, and we would love to get you know, people from ISIP on there and also get some engagement back as well. So you know, what did you enjoy? What do you think was most value? Where do you think maybe we've missed things? Because we've had to take things out of our syllabus because there was just, we just had too much to cover in two weeks. So um, uh, we'd be really interested to know what the community think. Um, if you do follow the link at the bottom of the page, that will put you onto the registration page. You can register, but also there's a video. It's a two or three minute video. I think it's quite an engaging one. It talks about some of the challenges and really builds on those focus areas of, of what we're looking to cover in the course. So, Herc, should we move to the uh, to the next slide, please? And really, this is the last one we want to show. There are some backup slides that have more about Kirsto's team and the group and some of the ways that they're engaging both from research and ac academia, but I think the, the fantastic thing for me working with the team in Leeds is their outreach with organizations like IBM and many other organizations, which, which I think has been hugely powerful. And I see that with the undergraduate students I've been working with, with the um, masters, the MBA students as well. So this, this focus on innovation, but this sort of cross collaboration between uh, universities and uh, industry, I think it, it is, is fantastic. And, I'm not sure if Matt is on yet, or Kirsty, you want to say a few words about that type of collaboration and the value you see of working with companies like IBM on this module, but more widely as well. Well, I think that uh, where I see the big value in, in collaborating with companies, uh, and IBM in particular for this case, is that we can actually bring um, two things together. Because the, the one thing is that innovation management is, is I, would, I would argue, it's probably an emerging uh, kind of professional, uh, I mean, professionalization, and I think that it, it has an emerging body of knowledge. And I think that that's something what we as an academics can actually somehow structurally present pretty well. On the other hand, uh, what, what uh, IBM brings here is certainly a lot of case studies, a lot of examples. Uh, uh, a, a lot of suggestion how to manage it. So I think that uh, what what certainly is uh, unique uh, for this uh, this MOOC that we can balance both things. So on one hand side, uh, some we we can present some conceptual knowledge, so some conceptual grounding for people who are involved in innovation. But at the same time, we can immediately show examples, approaches. Uh, techniques uh, how how to manage it so we can we can combine conceptual side with a more hands-on approach and I think that with that what probably makes this very different to the I would say to the training that would be provided by either just practitioners or just academics and, and certainly I've found um, fantastic synergies between the academic and industry piece as well so I do, a, I do a guest lecture as part of uh, Kirsto's um, MSc course on uh, global innovation management, uh, and which is run to a very to, to a whole set of MSc students in the business school and, and beyond. And I think, Kirsto, the first time I did that guest lecture, I talked through things I saw was really important that we're working with our clients and some of the key innovation challenges and how we're overcoming them. And at the end of that, you stepped out and said to the students, so you see all the things I was talking about, they are real. You know, it's not just the theory, and, and it was great that we had so much alignment in terms of the, the things that you've been looking at and obviously the things that, in practice, that I'm working on as well. So, so, so look, I thought it would be useful that, you know, we tried to minimize the number of uh, slides and, and talking on this and just open it up for, for um, questions from the, uh, from the full community on the call. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, this is great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Christo, uh, and thank you, Angela. Um, and uh, we, we appreciate it. This is a great presentation. So do we have any uh, questions, comments? So I will let people talk first. Uh, this is Jeff Saperstein. This is a great presentation. Thank you. Um, I guess my question is the nature of innovation that used to be called on the edge, where you had a, a, a product or a service and the innovation was happening. 
in a in a subgroup and our understanding is is that innovation at the core now is creating uh, disruption in a mainstream business or a, a large corporation so two part question how does innovation at the core versus innovation at the edge differ and two can large companies that are have a lot of legacy survive in an era of continuous disruption it's a big issue here in the states Christopher, if you want to take the first part, I'm just quite happy to take the second part. Well, I, I think that I, I, I wanted to, I mean, it's kind of easier to answer the second part, I guess. Uh, uh, I, I think I'll try to maybe kind of answer both. I think that the one question, the, the, the second one was whether established organizations can actually survive disruption. Am I right? Well, it's, we're in an era of continuous disruption, particularly with, uh, you know, augmented intelligence and cloud-based businesses that are seem to be running circles around more established companies. Uh, well, I think that certainly, I guess that focus on disruptive and discontinuous innovation and how to manage kind of exploration, exploration of uh, future business is potentially disruptive as well as probably protecting core business is something that is pretty central to this MOOC. Yeah, because and we've talked, sorry, sorry, just to carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that I just wanted to say that this is something that a lot of, you are right, a lot of established companies, maybe not quite companies like IBM, because the technology-led companies are all I would say reasonably paranoid about not being disrupted, so they pay sufficient attention to it. Uh, but a lot of other companies that might not necessarily be in, um, they are not used to this kind of continuous disruption, they usually focus mostly on their core business, they are not kind of looking at, uh, at the future opportunities, and I think that that's something what uh, for uh, it's quite characteristic for this MOOC that we are actually trying to send the message that the companies actually have to look at both. They have to look at the core business. They they have to look at the uh, well disruptive or discontinuous opportunities or threats, which of course will disrupt their core business eventually. Yeah, and one of the things we talk about in the MOOC is sort of IBM's approach, which is. You know, IBM has been disrupted and is a disruptor. So just the two topics that you mentioned, you know, cloud has been a disruption to IBM. IBM is now looking, to, you know, over the last 10 years, we've been looking at how do we manage that disruption? How do we change? How do we get in? How do we get ahead? Secondly, the, other, you know, the augmented in, intelligence one, what IBM will call cognitive computing, is where IBM has been looking to be a disruptor as well. So, so, and IBM has been going for about 100 years. So, so I think big companies can do that. But you need this thing of innovating in your core whilst at the same time, as Krista said, looking at that disruption and being able to innovate both your product services but also your operations to be efficient, but the key your business model as well. So it's one thing I think IBM's done a lot of is innovating and changes its business model. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> so I hope that was a quite a lot, quite a long answer from us. Uh, any other questions? It's a great question, that one. Yes, I have uh, one question. Please. Yeah. Yes, I, I just read through your website and found there is a, a three to four courses about innovation. Um, um, uh, um, do, do you think there is an inter, interrelationship between those courses? And uh, th this is the first question. Uh, the second one is, <clears throat> do you think that managing for innovation is the basics of the uh, innovation management courses in your university? Uh, Maybe you want to yeah, talk about I mean, so there's two, this, in terms of that future learn, it's, it's not an, a University of Leeds website, it's a much wider platform, but there are two innovation courses there, and uh, this is the second one, because you might want to position the first one against it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure which web page are you looking at. You are looking at the Future Learn web page. Thanks, sir. Yes, oh. yes. I I I just refer the FutureLearn.com uh, uh, website. Okay. Yes. Can you can you give me because you know FutureLearn it's 
that's not us, that's the platform. Not all the modules are actually coming from leads. They are two, oh. they, they, they are two modules which leads is involved. Uh, and I think that I wouldn't see them as something that is, well, you have to take one and then you have to take the second one and then you have to take the third one. So they are, I would say they are, they are independent, uh, in, uh, they are not kind of interdependent. So there is no, you don't have to take one and then take the second one. So I think that this one managing for innovation is pretty much, I would say, managing is, is a key word here. Uh, the other module that comes from from uh, from the from from the Leeds University is very basic in the sense of it's much more probably focus on maybe well uh, students somebody who has to get a pretty basic understanding what innovation is it's a lot of examples of product innovation uh, this one is pretty much about people who are professionally involved in managing innovation. Uh, so it's much more, it's a little bit more advanced, but again, it covers some basic topics if somebody is really a novice in, in, in the area of innovation. So there is, at the very beginning, uh, there is a set of topics and also a set of videos that cover some basic definitions, some basic approaches. Uh, so I, I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, they are uh, kind of interdependent in the sense that you have to take one and then the second one. Okay. Um, so hopefully that's uh, a little clear. So FutureLearn has thousands and thousands of courses. We have two specific innovation courses. Um, uh, I think we've got about five minutes left. Any, any, any more questions? Yes, I have a question. This is Scott McLeod in the San Francisco Bay Area. Thank you for this focus. I'm curious, uh, I posted my question into the text chat. Um, in what ways would it be possible to focus this course specifically on innovation generation and management in a wiki, uh, like on Wikipedia articles or pe people who are uh, editing Wikipedia articles and I asked specifically with regard to World University and School, which is like Wikipedia in multiple languages with MIT OpenCourseWare in its seven languages. So how would you adapt or focus your course in a specific way, which is wiki, that might uh, manage innovation around that immediate editing process that might manage innovation around um, an interlingual immediate editing of web pages uh, process. Can you draw out some of those possible connections, please? Uh, uh, that's, a, that's, that's a difficult one. I think that that would be more for Angela because uh, they have to make some business model about, about MOOCs. <laughs> so I think that uh, certainly I would say uh, this MOOC here is not, it's not the MOOC about how to edit on the Wikipedia. So okay. I think that uh, of course uh, if somebody has this expertise so that they can provide the content then MOOC might be a good approach to provide some training for this or provide some examples, but uh, that I think that that's not within within our MOOC, but well of course, and I think that that's something what we at Leeds probably wouldn't be able to develop, uh, uh, but if your question is if, if in general this can be developed, probably yes. If somebody has this expertise, then why not? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. And I think there's always different platforms and different approaches to doing these things, isn't there? So, no, no, no one way is right, is my is my view, because people learn in different ways and like different ways of learning. Thank this you. is Terry. I want to throw one one more in, kind of related to the last one. 
the the idea that we don't all write our own textbooks, uh, we don't all write all of our own exercises and the like, do you think we're going to get to a point where there's less of a walled garden around a particular course and you know some kind of a, an open marketplace where you know we can assemble courses from different nuggets or students could even self-assemble their own nuggets? Well, I, 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 Crystal, I'll say one line and then I'll hand it over to you because it's more of an education one, but I think when we're talking about disruptive innovation, I think we've hit on a, a disruptive um, innovation topic for universities and learning here, haven't we, in terms of the way people um, consume education. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Costa, would you would you add anything from us? Um, well, yeah, I think that we we have a, a small example. I think that in, under the disruptive innovation about whether, I mean, it's actually it, it's going to be a question for participants whether MOOCs are disruptive for universities, because at the moment we don't really know. So, uh, you know, the question here that you pose is that well, the the, the there are, there are many challenges, so the, technically I think that it's possible, I think that technically uh, you already have, uh, there are different open platforms, uh, there are a lot of different modules, they are at the end of the day all free, uh, so the students can certainly combine, I think that this can be extended, I think that not probably, it doesn't really exist in the, in the way you described, yet as far as I know, but that's possible development. Now the challenges here are of course, uh, is anybody going to commercialize this? Because as long as everything is free and there is no business model, then I don't see a lot of disruption uh, yes, going yeah, on. That's yeah, a classic dilemma, isn't it, that monetization one. And I, I know um, Angela Holmes from the uh, University of Leeds team who's uh, uh, from the digital team, we've probably got a lot to say this, but I, I note in, from the comments that I can see that there's a lot of microphones switched off, and I think Luke, a few people are struggling with the technology, so <laughs> I'm sure Angela would be, must be chomping at the bit to answer this one as well. But, uh, I'm conscious we're just about out of time as well. I am here. Can oh, you hear you're me? there, Angela, thank you. We can I am, yeah. I think, I think there needs to be some control over the, the courses, so I know Wikipedia has been mentioned and um, students building their own courses, but I think um, we still need to make sure that we have a platform that focuses on having a learning journey, that it still looks at the various different ways that students learn, so there needs to be an element of control and people know what they're doing, so it's a case of making sure there's a platform in place to do that. So I think um, so. if, if I may, this is this is Jeff Saperson. I just wanted to add something um, to the discussion. Is that there is a movement towards certification and badging, and organizations like LinkedIn have created LinkedIn Learning, in which training can be uh, actually rated in terms of how market ready it makes the individual. So the move from getting degrees and courses and curriculum to getting uh, students uh, or even people going back to training in their jobs and having open standards is a movement that will be a disruptor and it's already happening through LinkedIn. So it's, uh, on uh, talking about an online course which includes disruptive innovation, I think it was quite nice to finish with a disruptive innovation discussion around education. But uh, I think I, I'm conscious we're out of time when people start probably need to start to drop off. Um, so, um, if anybody wants to contact us, obviously we're on LinkedIn and so on, and I think you put my details in the email. But, uh, you know, to finish off, I'd just say it's been a hugely positive experience working with the University of Leeds team, and it would be great if we see some people from this community uh, attending the course, and if anybody wants to then feed back to us and carry on the conversation, that would be fantastic. Okay, this is great. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Krista. And thank you, Angela. And uh, we appreciate this presentation, and I'm to be honest, I'm personally planning to join about March and see how it goes. Just a one quick question I have. Are, is there any instruction control behind this education uh, module or it's more uh, fully, you know, no, no instructor involvement at no, all? It, it's, it's, a stru it's structured, so the actual platform leads you through 
the okay. modules of the course. So you, you follow a syllabus and um, halfway through there's an interaction point with the educators as well for people to ask questions. They can also post questions as they go, Angela, can't they, in terms of yeah, that's People's it. The questions. educators will be involved yeah. over two weeks, so they'll be answering any comments that students put on the platform. Okay, perfect. This is great. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you again, and have a wonderful afternoon, and have a great uh, rest of your day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.